First though, we're gonna do extra reconnaissance and extra other researches. Simply because, you know, we want to see a lot of the game. Which ones are the most interesting? Let's do five, why not? The professor keeps all the data on a closed network. I have clearance to access a few files, but most of the info is encrypted and in inaccessible to anyone but the professor himself. Good thing then that he left his laptop unattended before going on a trip to the mainland. He's gone to collect some specific components for some of the experiments we're running soon, or so he says, so I'm holding down the fort. When I open it, I see that his laptop is running on the same technology as the catalog. It's the only working computer that I've seen on the island. It's password protected, as I expected, but that's not the problem because I have a trick up my sleep. Kibbles, come over here, work your magic. Kibbles has been playing with what looks like a ro to be a rubber band under the professor's desk. He leaps up and stares at the screen with huge black pupils. It's a Unix system. I know it is. Okay, so you'll have to use an OS exploit and a pen drive to boot straight to desktop. Okay, slow down. I'm not good with this stuff. After some fiddling and impatient instructions for Kibbles, we reach the desktop. The professor's desktop background is a picture of him surrounded by cats. Should look cute, but it looks strangely unnatural. We search for the files, Kibble says we can get past the authentication process, but we still need to figure out how to decrypt them. Sets a process going to try to work out the encryption key. While there it's working in the background, I take a look around the rest of the computer to see what else I can find. Find a folder with pictures of all cats in it. They look like they were taken from a distance when a powerful zoom lens. Caught me mid sneeze, not very professional. Why do you think he has all these photos? Well, I don't think he took them. He's only interested in cats as research subjects. Really? Then how do you explain his desktop background? Dunno. The computer makes a noise. The program has fin finished trying to decrypt the files. Ugh, what is it? Couldn't get past the encryption. We can only get access to one file and it's an old one. I look at what he's referring to. Oh, but it's a good one. Yeah? What does it say? I read the document out loud. Observations on Project Felix. What, me? I'm Felix. Day 74. Subject ears are becoming pointed. Hearing range has expanded to 60 hertz. Subject appears to be developing a reflective layer behind the retina. Eyesight in darkness has improved by 50% since last measure. Subject's field of view has expanded to approximately 200 degrees. Body hair is becoming more dense. Longer hairs around the mouth and eyebrows have begun to grow faster and appear to carry sensory information. Attempts to reverse the changes have so far proven fruitless. Tomorrow we will carry out further invasive procedures. Day 75. Administer combination of amyglucoses, glucose and the chemical extracted from the feral cat's adrenal glands. Initial results are promising. Subject appears to be in acute pain at all times. Day 76. Subject has perished overnight due to sudden heart failure, potentially a result of increased stress. Post mortem to be carried out at 1700 hours. Whoa, that's dark. Yeah, it is. Probably a good thing you never told the professor you're catified. I nod and download the file to the pen drive as Kibble's instructed. Close the laptop. That's enough for one day, I think. What's the creepiest is that the subject name was the same as mine. Hmm. There is a trapdoor in the floor of the lab that is completely off limits. I've spied the professor going in and out a couple of times, but he always keeps it locked and it's never mentioned. He uses a keycard to enter, but as far as I'm aware, there are no copies. Strange though, having a trapdoor in a tent, let alone special high-tech security? Can't help wondering what on earth could be down there. 
I don't know if that's the catification or this environment, but my curiosity has really started to get the better of me recently. I've spent some time rummaging and have finally formulated a plan on how to get past the trapdoor and into whatever is beneath it. But this is more than one person's job. I need to find an accomplice. I made my way down there to the beach to a familiar sight at this time of day. Snooty, Booty, McMurphy and Kibbles all reclining in the afternoon sun. The gang's all here. Can't you count? There's only three of us. I didn't mean it literally, Kibbles, but it's good to catch you. I need a willing volunteer to help me on my mission. Felix, my dear, champ throw I always am to see you. You really do have a particular skill for interrupting one's beauty sleep. Now, if you could just move slightly to your left, you're casting a shadow. This shift my position lower my exp and lower my expectations. This might not go as smoothly as I hoped. How about it, Murph? Fancy going on an adventure? Ah, Kara, you must know cats are a bit better than, than that by now. You're going to have to give us all the details before you get any of us to agree to anything. Okay, how about this for intrigue? I have discovered a trapdoor in the ground of the main lab. Yeah, what about it? Oh, you know about it already? Obviously, it's not exactly hidden. So what's down there? Dunno, don't care. Only the professor goes down there, Kara. And you can't blame us for not wanting to keep him company. Not that we'd be welcome. Come on, guys, aren't any of you slightly curious? I already have a plan figured out. All I need is someone smart, stealthy, and skillful to be my partner in crime. Ah, Kara, there are many things I would do for you, but going into the professor's territory is not one of them. I'm surprised at you, McMurphy. I thought you at least would be lured by the thrill of the unknown. Unknown, my eye? Whatever the professor is hiding down there can't be good, that much we do know. I don't even know why you asked us. How can a bunch of cats help you? I'm glad you asked that, Kibbles. In brief, I have already worked out that the door is operated by an automated mechanism. When the boss walks through the door, it closes and locks behind him instantly. Well, almost instantly. It's your job to prevent that mechanism from making contact. Obviously, but how? I will sneak you into the lab in my backpack, and when the professor is exiting the trapdoor, I will distract him while you make a break for it, and using your epic weapon as a tool, prevent the door from fully sealing. Oh yeah, my weapon, and that would be your pebble. Kibbles looks like he's about to scrap her, and I know I have to move quick. I open my rev sack, and you pop, and now you'll be the bravest cat of them all. McMurphy flashes me with a wink and nudges Kibbles forward. Valiant and brave as ever, Kibbles. You're a better man than me. Kibbles gulps and slinks into my backpack. I head back to the lab before he can change his mind. Now you got to be qu uh, as quiet as you can. A muffled voice comes from inside my bag. Hey Felix, your job is really boring. Kibbles, my job isn't waiting around for people to go through trapdoors all day. What exactly is your job? What well, varies from day to day. Most of the time I'm looking after the cats. Friendly Tabby called Oscar meows from his cage as if he knows what we're talking about. Other days I might receive a delivery of samples and have to run extensive tests and log the information. Hey Felix, your job is really boring. Shh. I cut him off as the trapdoor begins to open and give my backpack an elbow as the Faster emerges. Ah, good day, Felix. Beginning on new samples, are we? Always good to get a head start. Oh, yes, sir. I actually wanted to ask your opinion on this one. As I walk the professor over to my workstation, Kibbles has already leapt out of my bag and darted through the trapdoor just before it closes. Oh, actually, I see what I've done. I misread the 843. Now it all makes sense. Sorry to waste your time, professor. No worries, Felix. Say, may I ask you the last time that you visit the optician? Just before I came to the island. Everything was perfectly normal, sir. That's why I wear glasses. Jolly good. Just checking. A professor pushes his specs up onto the bridge of his nose and wafts out of the room. I breathe a sigh of relief and run over to Kibbles. He has wedged the small rock inside the rim so that I can just pull the heavy door open. 
Well done, comrade. I know you were the cat for the job. Kibbles looks proud in spite of his fear. Victory or death! I step down to join him, leaving the pebble wedging open the door above our heads. Immediately I can make out a staircase in the gloom, taking us further underground. By the time we reach the last step, the temperature has changed noticeably, and I realize my teeth are chattering. Don't be scared, Felix. I'll protect you. Thank you, Kibbles. Fumble along the wall for a light switch. As soon as the lights come up, I cannot help but gasp. In front of us is a set of steel cabinets. The light glints off them and forces my eyes into a squint. This place reminds me of something, but I can't really think what. The drawers of the cabinets are neatly labeled, each explaining what is contained within. Gallbladder, claw, front left. Parotid glad. There are hundreds of these. Row upon row. I open the drawer labeled claw, right hand, and that's what I feared I would find. Boxed claw samples, each labeled with a name, number, and some notes about the particular subject. Age, weight, breed, coloring. Every component that makes up a cat is laid out neatly in front of us. As a scientist, I'm used to seeing animal parts, but there's something different about this place. The sheer volume is overwhelming. Cats after butchered cat. It's horrifying. I feel sick. I know what this place reminds me of. A morgue. What the hell is this? Is this what they were doing to the cats that die here? I wonder if they were even waiting for them to die, but I keep my thoughts to myself. I look through the notes that Papur left on top of the cabinet. Looks like they're harvesties from cats that die during testing so they can study the effects of various compounds on each of the specimens. Neither Kibbles nor I feel curious anymore. We decide to close this particular door behind us. The island is a very sad place. Let's do something fun. Let's tag a cat. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. I'm out of tag and scan rotation. The sun is beginning to set and the beach is cooler. This hunting time, so in theory, more cats will be drawn out from the hiding holes. The other time for tagging is midday when they're at its laziest, but I find the heat too intense to come to this part of the island at that time. Something catches my eye and leads me into the forest. Oh, here, kitty. Just me. Oh, hi, Kibbles. How's it going? Define it. Or oh, what's that thing? Kibbles is already eyeing my chipping pen. Looks like a weapon. Is it a weapon? No. Well, kind of. Do you want me to show you how it works? Kibbles gave me an exasperated look. How dumb do you think I am, human? Look, you're doing me a huge favor if you just let me use this thing on you. Oh, yeah? Yes. I don't think I can actually tag you twice, and I need all the practice I can get. Well then, catch me if you can! I hear a nya echo through the forest as Kibble seems to disappear before my very eyes. Impressive! How did you do that? Kibbles, come back! I won't shoot you, okay? I'll even let you have a go if you can show me how you disappeared so fast. It won't come back now. The new voice startles me. He's like the skark... Scarlet is a thief. I turn to see a mid-sized brown-haired cat scratching at the trunk of a tree. Oh, hello. I don't think we met before. My name's... I know who you are, Turntail. The island is buzzing with news about you. Turntail? What does that mean? I realize I'm going to scan her. Kibble sleeps from nowhere and pins the new cat to the floor. Shoot her! Nya nya nya. I, uh, uh, sorry. This won't hurt for your own good, so that we can make sure you stay safe and healthy and I seize my opportunity and move fast. I've already grabbed the scrub of her neck and before I finish speaking, I press the pen between her shoulder blades and release the microchip. There, all done. Wasn't that so bad, was it? Whoa, awesome. Can I shoot the next one? I doubt that, Kibbles. I wiggle my thumbs in his direction. Aw, oh, man, I gotta get me some of those. Can I get up now? I have things to do. Kibbles? He remains, he remains pinned to the other cat. I reach for the spray bottle in my pocket and he leaps away with a laugh. Off you go then, to do your things. Anything I can help you with? No, just duties, 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 duties. Must get everything done. 
Okay, I'm going to have to enter data for you in this catalog. How about we call you B? B? Because you're so busy? Busy B? Look, B, it would be good if I could get you to come to the camp to check you over and make a note of your details. If you want to drop by when you're free, that would be great. Otherwise, I'll have to come back with a cat carrier. Not so great. I'll come back. I know the place. The cat slinks off. Do you know her, Kips? Kibbles emerges from his hiding place in the tree. Yeah, I know her. Is she okay? She seems a bit unhappy. Oh, she's fine. She's just like you, is all. Like me. What do you mean? You're the scientist. You work it out. Kibbles vanishes again. position Professor Popper taught me. Legs crossed back straight, wrists resting lightly on my knees and fingers pulled into a loose circle with forefinger and thumb touching gently. I close my eyes and hear a rhythmic purring, slow and steady. My fur prickles at the sea breeze and my ears twist at the distant sounds of feet on wood and seagulls crying in another faraway place. The smell of the sea fills my nostrils, the taste of salt fills my mouth. I begin to focus on my breathing and the rhythm of my heartbeat, allowing my mind to drift. As I take a deep breath in, the tide comes creeping toward me as though I'm pulling it. When it's just centimeters away from my bare toes, I slowly release my outward breath to count to five beats. One, two, three, four, five. With each beat, I push the tide back into the horizon until it's almost touching the rising sun. Breathe in, two. Three, four, five, and out. Drifting now, without attachment to thought, my mind free from worry and care. So we're meditating as half a cat as we're making purring noises. Let's do some samples. I don't really want to do the super dark ones. The super dark ones are kind of uncomfortable. Today I'm in the lab doing flora research. It's not the most exciting job, but if I keep my head down, I can get through it quickly enough. It really just consists of unpackaging the new samples of plants and flowers that Professor and I have collected on our foraging expeditions and logging them into the database of organic substances on the computer. Most of them are commonplace plants that have grown abundantly in the forest, but occasionally we come across something more rare, exotic even. One of the samples I'm looking at today is Calendula in Carna Marima, which is very interesting indeed. Can't help speculating that it's been cultivated in the Margold's little greenhouse and then transplanted to open ground. I'm distracted momentarily by the sound of clicking glass and I turn to see the beautifully manicured paw of Sphinx cat tapping on the beaker and nudging it perilously close to the edge of the counter. Boots, stop that! You're not supposed to be in here! She laughs as though I've told a joke. That's frightfully pretty flower. Calendula incarna marima, if I'm not mistaken. You never cease to amaze me, Boots. How on earth did you know that? Why, I make it my business to know all about frail and valuable works of art. Art? Why not? It has been created like a sculpture or a painting. The marigolds are true artists in their garden. Ah, I wondered if they had something to do with this. It's so unusual, even in its natural swampy habitat, but to have it growing here in the forest is very out of the ordinary. Yeah, its properties are extraordinary too, human. Well, I'm quite new to botanical science, so I probably don't know the half of it. Why don't you fill me in? Although I'm always happy to facilitate your learning, human, I simply can't stay here a moment longer. The air is so stale, don't you find? I ignore her sideways glance and upturned nose. Let's go to the beach and drink some coconut water and I'll tell you everything you need to know. Snoots, I'm not going anywhere until I finish this. Don't be ridiculous, you can thinker about in here anytime, but the sun will be gone in an hour or two. I'm not thinkering, this is my job. I don't get it done, the professor will want to know why. Then explain to him you had better things to do. Snooty booty, I won't tell you again. If he catches you here, Popper will cage you. Be careful with that flower, human. 
doesn't do to inhale that fragrance too deeply. Uh. I turned to ask why to see her fawn slough knocking the beaker with a swish of her tail as she does. You did that on purpose. But she is gone, leaving me to clean up the broken glass. It probably has sedative qualities or something like that, and that's why they're growing it in here to begin with. I am ready! Let's get ourselves fired, guys! And it has been something that I've read from somebody else's playthrough, I'm sorry! Shouldn't let the curiosity get the better of this cat, but it did. I just want to see so much of the game. I arrive at the lab a little later than usual today. I got held up by an incredibly important task of petting all the cats I saw on my way in. Really crucial stuff. As I enter, I see a large, unmarked wooden box on the table. Morning, Professor. I wasn't expecting you to work be working alongside me today. I'm not, I'm afraid. I'm actually in rather a hurry, but I need to explain to you a new protocol I'd like you to carry out for me. He opens the lid of the crate, and inside there are rows of small, clear bottles, each containing white fluid. What's this? Milk? No, those are samples from our offshore lab. Samples of what? So many questions! Curiosity is a marvelous trait for a scientist. Now I want you to run some tests on these. I want you to check how they respond to contact with compounds 16, 18, and 24. I notice how deftly he evaded my question. Once you've done that, provided there are no complications, I need you to apply the sample to some of the cats and record the results. I beg your pardon? Apply the sample to the cats, Felix. We're looking for specific reactions. Of course, sir, but... Oughtn't I have a little more information before I start applying an untested product to a living subject? Look, Felix, I understand your concerns, of course I do. However, once in a while, one has to trim the red tape, and this is one of those occasions. Now really, I'm in the most awful rush, my dear, but I have a complete faith in you. And suddenly I'm alone. Pick up one of the samples from the box. Looks like a miniature milk bottle, but the fluid inside is creamier than milk. I retrieved the compounds for the cabinet the professor wanted me to test and spent some time combining them with the sample. From what I can tell, the compounds are some kind of organic material, but no one has told me where they come from or what they actually are. Look at them under the microscope one by one and add little of the sample. It's a bit like glue, so it's hard to get it to combine, but once I do, something odd happens. Dead cells that make up the compounds start to move excitedly. They aren't coming back to life exactly, but they're behaving like living cells. I have no idea what this stuff is or its intended use, but I know that I feel uncomfortable applying it to live subjects. I look at the cats in the cages to look back at me with trusting eyes. Refuse. No, I'm not gonna do it. If the professor continues to withhold information, then I think it's only right that I put the responsibility back on him. He can carry out the procedure himself. Send Pop for a message from my catalog. <laughs> professor, I feel I cannot continue in my task today until I understood what the implications of what it is I'm being asked to do with the cats. Don't get a reply right away. Eventually the catalog beeps. Oh dear, that's disappointing. I'd be happy to comply if you could just give me a little more information. If you really are having such difficulties in carrying out your duties, perhaps it would be best for me to find someone who's better equipped. I'm afraid of I may lose my job if I don't administer the sample. I feel the implicit threat. I'm sorry you see it that way, sir. I love my job here, but this is oversteps a personal boundary. Collect your things, you can catch the boat in the morning. I still can't quite believe what happened, and I'm really ho going home already. I went to see Professor in his tent last night to discuss our difference of opinion. I was hoping to straighten things out so that I could continue working here, but he wasn't there, and I received a curt message from him asking that I be on the boat the first thing in the morning. So here I am, heading to the jetty there, the boat is waiting for me. I feel very alone in the morning, miss, no one to wave me off. Oh well, it's too late for regrets now. I shall focus on the excitement of returning to my old life. Strange, I can't seem to remember my life before. That was quick. You drink all the boss's whiskey or something? Something. He looks at me suspiciously. 
Must be bad then, playing with the cats instead of working? Let's just go, shall we? I can't wait to get home. And where would that be? Huh? Home! Do you know where your home is? Don't be daft. For some reason my mind can't focus and I can't seem to remember. Where then? Uh, it's... Don't worry, just sit there for a moment and obviously you get shot. Essentially, oh, oh, extras, that's an extra thing, that's interesting, aw, oh, kibbles, you have been sacked, hooray for us, the last thing that we're gonna attempt is to romanticize one female kitty, and that's the next time.